aim of this experiment is to draw the forward characteristics of a semiconductor diode and hence to determine the static resistance and dynamic resistance of the diode. This will be the circuit. This is a battery. This is a rheostat. This is a variable head. It's connected to the diode, positive terminal of the diode. This is a negative terminal connected to the milliammeter and this is a resistance and the circuit is completed. This is the key. If you are using only a 2 volt battery and a resistance or rheostat of say in the order of 100 ohms or less than 100 ohms, then it is not necessary that you should keep a resistance over here. In this experiment, we are only doing the forward characteristics that is we will be biasing this diode in a forward manner that is the positive end of the diode will be connected to the positive end of the battery. That is what is meant by forward biasing. By varying the contact point of this variable head, we will be continuously varying the input voltage to the circuit so that at every position of the rheostat or at a fixed input voltage, we will be measuring the voltage drop across this diode as well as the current through the diode circuit. For various values of voltage, we will be finding out what is a milliammeter reading or the current corresponding current for the voltage. Thereby, we will be finding out what is the forward resistance that is V by I in this column. So this will be the aim of the experiment. This is a close-up view of a diode. Actually, the name of the diode IN4007 is written over here. This silver ring denotes the negative terminal of the diode. So the other part is the other terminal is the positive end of the diode. For the sake of convenience, we are going to do the circuit in this breadboard. As you know, all these points are individual points. These five dots constitute one point. These five points constitute another point and these five dots constitute another point and so on like this. While on the top and bottom, the single point connection is like this, horizontal. Till here, it is one point. And this whole line of 25 points is another single point. This is another single point, And this is another single point. So here, the points are separated vertically. And here, this makes a single horizontal point on the top and the bottom. I have placed the diode on the breadboard. This negative ring shows this is a negative terminal and this is the positive terminal. In fact, all the five points here constitute the same point and here also all the five points corresponds to the same single point. So first we will construct this primary part. This is a positive part of the battery, positive terminal to the one base of the rheostat. The next base of the rheostat is connected to the key as we have seen in the diagram. This key is removed for the present and it is connected to the negative terminal. So this circuit is complete. This is a circuit which we have connected and have taken a variable head connection from the rheostat. This is a variable head connection. So this is a voltmeter. I have taken two wires from the positive and negative of the voltmeter. This is the milliammeter. I have taken two wires from the milliammeter also. So we will now construct this part of the circuit first. That is starting from the variable head of the rheostat. It is to be connected to the positive end of the diode. I will connect it here. 
okay now the negative end of the diode should go to milliammeter positive so i'll take the connection from the milliammeter the positive of the milliammeter should go to this point now the negative of the milliammeter you can avoid this resistance 1k if you are using a 2 volt battery if a high voltage is used then you have to keep a re resistance over here so the negative of the milliammeter i'm putting it to this base point base line i will call it so i'm going to use this straight line point as the base we have done it till here but we have to complete it over here so that the circuit is complete so from the base of the rheostat which is connected to the key you have to take an additional wire and put it to the base line then only the circuit will be complete so i'll take a wire from the base and connect it to the negative of the milliammeter so it is this baseline so the circuit is complete the variable head goes to the positive end of the diode from the negative end of the diode to the positive end of the milliammeter negative end of the milliammeter to a point where the base of the rheostat has come so the circuit is complete now we will introduce the voltmeter across this diode so the positive of the voltmeter should go to this point so i am introducing it over here and the negative of the voltmeter should go to this point over here so now our circuit is done now what we can do us we can introduce the key in the circuit and vary the position of the rheostat and look out for the voltmeter and ammeter reading that will be a procedure introduce the key vary the rheostat variable head observe the voltmeter and ammeter at every point of the rheostat so that you can take your vi readings so i'm introducing the key then increase the rheostat from one end so now you can see now the voltage in the voltmeter is 0.3 volt hope you can see it in the video 0.3 volt and let us look out for the ammeter reading it is zero it is zero now i will increase the voltage in the voltmeter with the help of rheostat i have made it 0.4 volt still again the ammeter is reading zero so current is zero at this point of voltage also now i have increased to 0.5 volt and again you can see the ammeter reading is point again zero now i will increase the voltage again now the reading is 0.6 in the voltmeter and let us look out for the current in the milliammeter yes the current reading is now started it is two divisions that is it corresponds to 10 milliampere now again i will increase the voltage here to 0.7 volt i'm slowly increasing the voltage it has reached 0.7 volt if you can see it and the current has now increased to say three divisions that is 15 milliampere now i'll be trying to increase the voltage again so now you can see the voltage is not increasing much but the current is going on increasing you look in the milliammeter the current goes on increasing slowly it is increasing so you can see the volt ammeter is increasing in reading now the let us look at the voltmeter it has reached 0.8 volt so for a 0.8 volt voltage the ammeter reading has gone to uh 70 no 80 milliampere so now the reading is on 80 milliampere 
Now again, if I try to increase the voltage, the voltage is not increasing in the voltmeter, but the current goes on increasing and it reaches to a maximum of 200 as per this milliameter. Now I have inter entered my voltage and current onto this table. So initially when the voltage was 0.1 to 0.5, the current measured was 0. Then at 0.6, it came to 10 milliampere and 0.7, 15, 0.8, it remained constant and continuously the current started increasing. So I calculated the resistance way by I. Initially, it was infinity. Then it came down to 60 ohm, 46 ohm and 1 ohm and it will go on decreasing. So this can be plotted. This V and I can be plotted in a graph. This is your IV characteristics have plotted voltage on the x-axis and current in milliampere's on the y-axis. The graph would look something like this. Initially, it is 0 ampere and then it starts increasing and then suddenly for a voltage of say 0.7, it goes on increasing. So, if you extrapolate this graph, the steady rise portion of the current uh, back on to the x-axis, then that cutting point is known as the knee voltage. The implication is that beyond that point, the current increases steeply or suddenly. Now the next aim would be to find the static resistance of the diode. For that, choose some suitable current value that is the point P should be on the rising edge of the graph. So at that point P, evaluate what is your voltage and what is your current. This will be your voltage and this will be your current. So static resistance at 10 milliampere I have taken. You may choose it at your convenience depending on your graph. That is equal to V by I that is O n by o m so v by i is o n by o m evaluate it and you will get the static resistance now we will evaluate the dynamic resistance at the same 10 milliampere point so what you have to do is take choose two points delta i let it be 10 plus 3 13 milliampere and 10 minus 3 that is 7 milliampere. So delta I would be 6 milliampere. Then find out what is the corresponding delta V for this delta I points. So once you get delta V and delta I about 10 milliampere, you can calculate your dynamic resistance. And the final interpretation would be you will definitely get dynamic resistance is less than the static resistance. The concept is that dynamic resistance means once it has started increasing in the current steeply. So it has to be less than the static resistance. All these measurements we have done for a silicon diode IN4007. You can in fact do the experiment for the reverse bias of the diode also. But you have to be very careful in giving the reverse voltage because the reverse voltage will damage the PN junction easily. It is better to do the reverse bias characteristics using a germanium diode OA79. The main difference in the experimental setup would be you will reverse bias the, the diode and also, the milliameter will be replaced with a microameter. The current we measure will be in microamperes. So, if you take the readings for OA79, you will get something like this. This will be your reverse bias characteristics. So, you can list out the results. The IV characteristics of a PN junction diode, semiconductor diode is studied. The knee voltage is evaluated. The static resistance at 10 milliampere equals so much ohms. Dynamic resistance at 10 milliampere is so much ohms. 
and dynamic resistance is found to be less than the static resistance. Here, I would also like to include the method to check the or the working of a diode using a multimeter. So you can put the knob of the multimeter over to this position where you have got the diode sign. Put your knob here. Then try to forward bias your diode and see the resistance. Here, this is the negative terminal and this is a positive terminal. Silver ring is over here. So, I will give a negative voltage to this black knob and a positive biasing for this knob. So, you can watch the resistance. When it is forward biased, the resistance will be in the order of few ohms like this, hundreds of ohms. Now, when I reverse bias it, that is, I give the positive potential to the negative terminal and negative potential to the positive terminal. Then you can see the resistance. It will be out of range and it will show uh, overflow and show as one in the first digit. So in this manner, you can check for the working condition of the diode. Hope this video was useful. I'll be uploading few more videos shortly, so please subscribe the channel.